Welcome everybody to the August 31st, 2023 Board of Public Works and Safety meeting. Roll call, please. Mr. Long. Here. Mr. Long. Here. Mr. Long. Are there any conflict of interest statements? Uh, moving on to approval of the minutes of the meeting of August 24th, 2023. I recommend the approval of those minutes. Uh, and I concur. Uh, bid openings, I see none. Uh, matters from other department heads or their representatives. Yes, sir. Mr. Button. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning to the board. Good morning. Uh, so I have for you this morning uh, an action uh, to uh, do a full closure of Holman in Michigan, as was done in early August. I have representatives here from uh, the contractor Passion, Mike Mike Woods, Drew Murtaugh, and. Anthony? Same item, it's on 9B. No, sir. No, sir. So they're here to help me answer any questions that, I, that you might have or, or uh, council might have regarding the closure. This was a closure that we, uh, we had in early August that we attempted to make the bridge set and there was some issues that transpired and some corrective actions that were taken. They're here now to, to make a request to, to set that bridge again. Uh, last week, I met with uh, these gentlemen and talked about uh, what are we going to do to try to make sure that the schedule gets maintained. The request is that they close Michigan and Holman starting uh, Tuesday, September 5th, and reopening uh, the the 17th of uh, it might might be the 18th. I think it's down for the 18th, which is a Monday, September 18th to to reopen that intersection later on you'll have an action on a partial closure of the same intersection following uh following this full closure um and so we we met last week and we talked about making sure that they had all the materials ready what sort of risks there were in the schedule to make sure that they've accommodated for that in this schedule um, Drew and I are going to make daily uh, communications at the end of each day to make sure that they're still on schedule with their setting. Uh, we reviewed their plan. They gave me the detailed plan of how they were going to construct these, they're, they're called air bridges, across the street to avoid any utility sort of conflict or, or impact that they might have. So they're, they're basically building a bridge over the, the, the utilities to make sure that they don't get impacted at all. And they'll, they'll build uh, shoring columns underneath the bridges so that, because they, they come in two, two pieces, right? They've, erect, they've, they've assembled them in two pieces and they have to splice them in the middle. And so that's, that's what uh, they, they intend to do. The cranes are in place, they're ready to do the set. Um, and, and so through all of that, knowing that, you know, this is a difficult situation, we sort of went through this before, we found problems in the earlier closure that, um, that helped prepare for the, this closure now. Um, there were some voids under the street that we didn't know about, but the contractor undertook uh, a, a process called ground penetrating radar and found voids underneath the road to our benefit, right? Because we didn't know they were there. And so uh, those voids were, those, those, the street was opened up, the voids were filled and compacted, and they'll, they'll be put right, or I think they're already put right uh, in, the, in the meantime, um, so that they don't have a problem when they go to set the bridge, uh, uh, particularly the shoring uh, piers that go in to support the bridge across. So we've, we've reviewed it. We, uh, I feel confident that they can meet this schedule based upon everything that they said. The only risk that, that we know is severe and clement weather, right? It's something that we can't control at all, right? So if there's a tornado or heavy thunderstorm, uh, light rain, won't, they're, they're telling me that won't cause a problem. They'll continue to work through that area. They're working uh, definitely Saturdays to make sure that this work gets done. And so uh, engineering uh, recommends approval of this action. So, Council? Yeah, from the administration standpoint, here's the thing. Um, we had the same assurances last time <laughs> that the street was going to be, here it's going to be closed for seven days or whatever it was. And it was closed for sure but it was closed because the crane busted a 12 inch main, uh, the crane could have significantly damaged a 54 inch main, which would have been a disaster for the city. And people got to complain to the administration, not to the contractor, I'm sure as much, about the closure of the street. And we got to hear about how kids couldn't get to school and this and that, and we knew it was gonna be closed for that time. Um, 
look, this is a great project for the city. Uh, we're all in support of the project. The issue that the administration has is to make sure that the um, inconvenience to folks is as minimal as possible. Unfortunately, in this situation, we don't have that because we already had the inconvenience with no work being done because of what happened with the crane. This time, I'm sure Passion is ready to do their job and they've looked at it properly this time around or their engineers have or whoever's letting them know about the crane is, is now has the plan corrected, right? Um, what I would like to avoid is a situation where um, they go over the amount of time they need. I get inclement weather, I get things happen. Um, so what I would like to have happen is that, number one, if they do need additional time, they come before this board immediately, basically next week, right? They'll know, right. I'm sorry, wait, it starts the 5th. They'll have two opportunities to come before the board. Right. They'll have next Thursday and the Thursday after, saying like, hey, we ran into this. We just need communication so that we can then get it out to the public and say, here's what's happening. Secondly, it'd be my recommendation that Passion be notified that if they don't let us know they need more time, and they go over that they are aware that they are subject to a fine for um, closing the road without authority. So, and that of course is up to 2,500 bucks a day. It's in the city code. So I just want to let them know that they're that they are subject to that, um, and that we assume that they're not going to have to worry about that. But I just do want the lines of communication open so that we're not in a situation um, where we can't let people know if it's going to go over. So, agree. I mean, communication is key. Right. Um, we have no problems coming here next Thursday um, and saying, hey, listen, we had a day of lightning and rain. We lost a day. We need a day. I mean, that's that's construction. So um, no problem. There. Thank you. Absolutely. I think that's that's all we can ask for. Uh, it's the unknown that really hurts us, obviously, because we can't let people know what's going on. Correct. And they like like Kevin said, they tend to blame us or the mayor's office, not you guys, unfortunately. So. Um, I'm good with that. Okay. Should we? So that should be the in the part of the recommendation. Inherent, the code, the okay. code allows us to define them if it comes up. I think just I would, you know, Dean recommended approval. That's great by us, by me, okay. and uh, the law department. So as long as they know that they're subject to the fine and I think they've acknowledged that, then we're good. Yeah, and if Dean's getting regular daily updates, if there's an amount of rain that does stop them for a day or something, you can let us know if it's prior to Thursday. Correct? That's okay. So, yes. Okay. I recommend the approval of engineering's request in regards to passion and the closing of Holman in Michigan. And I concur. Thank you. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Uh, anything else from department heads or their representatives? Okay, moving on to correspondence. Letter A, correspondence received from William Short, Chief of Police, requesting the approval for Corporal Daniel Drudge to be transferred from Patrol Division to the Detective Bureau effective September 5th, 2023. Corporal Brendan O'Neill and Sergeant Jeffrey Miller to be transferred from the Special Deployment Unit to the Detective Bureau effective September 5th, 2023, and approval of the petition for retirement from Master Sergeant Thomas Hargrove, who has served the citizens of Hammond for 30 years to become effective the close of business on November 17th, 2023. I recommend the approval of Chief Short's request. And I concur. Letter B, correspondence received from Milestone requesting to close one lane of traffic in each direction on 169th Street from Parrish Avenue to Kennedy Avenue to complete milling and resurfacing beginning September 5th, 2023 through September 12th, 2023, submitted for approval. Just when you thought Hessville was safe, <laughs> we're, we're, uh, we're doing a lane restriction, right? So we're not closing off every rail crossing in the city. Milestone uh, through in cooperative, well, the, mayor's, uh, the mayor and Councilman Raycos have uh, equ equally uh, decided to fund uh, the resurfacing of 169th through the Kennedy intersection through to Parrish, right? And so Milestone is requesting on Monday to do lane restrictions to in order to do the milling and resurfacing in that area. Um, uh, couldn't come at a better time, really, to get this work right. done. It's not going to adversely affect traffic. Uh, too terribly, right? It'll be one lane in each direction that's open all the time, and we'd ask for your approval. Okay. I recommend the approval of Milestone's request as submitted. And I concur. Thank you. Uh, letter C, correspondence received from Special Events Coordinator Eileen Abara requesting permission to hold the 2023 Hammond Veterans Appreciation Day Parade on November 4th, 2023 with attached route 
Uh, number two, street closure on Lyons from Calumet Avenue east to the alley for the 2023 tree lighting ceremony on November 24th, 2023. And three, permission to hold the 2023 Hammond Holiday Parade on December 2nd, 2023 with attached route. Yeah, yeah. I recommend the approval of Ms. Ibera's request. And I concur. Uh, letter D, correspondence received from the controller's office requesting the approval of the renewal of amusement device license for Fraternal Order of Eagles, uh, number 3117. I recommend the approval of the controller's office request. And I concur. Uh, number eight, matters from board members. There's a letter here from Jose Manzo. I, Jose Manzo, respect, respectfully request to have the South Alley of the 500 block of Goslin Street closed on Sunday, September 3rd, between the hours of 4 p.m. and 11.59 p.m. We are having a birthday party for my daughter and will light the alley closed to set tables and chairs to accommodate the guests. I regret, regret the late request, but he was unfamiliar with the process of having an alley closed. Thank you for your consideration, Jose Man Manzo. The time is... Yeah, he's requesting 11.59 p.m. We've been... Is he here? Is that... Yes. Okay. How you doing, sir? Good morning. Um, I don't believe we have a problem with the request other than the time that you're going to end. We like it ending at 10 p.m., not 11.59. That's too much too late. Um, so I think we're, we are willing to approve it from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., and we hope that that's uh, good enough for you. You good with that? Okay. Yes, no, thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. I recommend the. Uh, uh, thank you for the approving the late request. Oh, that's okay. They were not sure of the process. No problem. Yeah. Okay. I recommend the approval of Mr. Manzo's request with the um, edit of the time to 10 p.m. And I concur. Uh, anything else from board members? Nope. Okay. Number nine, new business. Uh, letter A, resolution establishing establishing a policy and procedure for the whiting off excuse me, writing off of bad debts, uncollectible accounts receivable, or any adjustments to record balance in accordance with Hammond or Indiana Accounting and Uniform Compliance Guidelines. Uh, good morning to the board again. Um, this is a uh, request from the State Board of Accounts that the city adopt an official policy regarding bad debts. It'll be controlled, um, by, the con controlled by the controller's office, and um, they will report to the board when they declare a debt bad, I think quarterly or something like that. And, okay. um, but I want to make sure that there's a, that um, you know the implementation of the policy, of course, will be with the department, but the setting of the policy will be with the board. So that's okay. what the point of the resolution is, and we've worked with the controller's office on this. Gotcha. I request its approval as presented. Okay. I recommend the approval for the bad debt write-off as submitted. And I concur. Uh, letter B, uh, right-of-way permits received from engineering for passion requesting a partial road closure of Michigan Street and Holman starting September 18th, 2023 through September 30th, 2023. Michigan Street will remain closed while single lanes northbound and southbound on Holman Avenue will be open. Second first, similar to the first. It's a partial closure that, uh, that the contractor is requesting. So there'll be uh, traffic allowed through so that they can complete their detail work on the west side of Holman Avenue. Um, so they, they, they can bring traffic through, but they still have to complete the finishing of the, of the bridge gotcha. installation. And so uh, they're, we're just asking for a lane restriction. And, uh, and Mike Woods and Drew Murtaugh and Anthony are all here in case there's any questions I can't ask. Answer, sorry. No. Thank you, Dean. I recommend the approval for the right-of-way permit as submitted. And I concur. Thank you. Uh, letter C, notice of violation hearing for property located at 3950 Johnson Avenue. Good morning. Good morning. All right. The property was inspected on July 20th, 2023. During the inspection, it was discovered that the property contains an illegal basement apartment and the apartment is in violation of IRC code 3051, the minimum height, ceiling height only measured at six foot eight under the seven foot requirement. IRC code 3171, dwelling unit separation. There is not a proper fire separation assembly between the first floor and the basement. Uh, IRC code 3101, 
uh, emergency escape and rescue. The property has glass block windows around the basement, so it would be impossible to escape the basement in the event of a fire. Um, there were, uh, HMC code 15003. Um, there were no permits to account for the creation of the basement apartment. And then zoning. Zoning does not allow for a two-unit dwelling in that area. Um, I, have, I have spoken to the owner uh, during the inspection. I haven't heard from them since then, um, but they had initially communicated to me that they needed to change the billing of the water in order to reflect a single-family home, and that's how we found the basement apartment. And I explained to them that that would not be changed until the apartment was removed. But um, we, I would just ask the board to affirm the removal based on this findings. Okay. Is there anybody here from 3950 Johnson? Anybody here on that address? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I just wanted the board to know that, the, and this just came up recently, the importance of uh, issuing the findings in order on these violations, those are recorded. And just recently, uh, in fact, yesterday, I got an email from an attorney asking about what the findings in order were because the property is being sold. And so it, I can't let the board know how important and thankful I am that these findings and orders are entered because it does end up down the road when someone sells it, it comes up on the title report and it lets them know you can't have, it was a cut up or you can't have a basement apartment. And so I would encourage the board to continue to issue findings and orders, take this under advisement, issue the findings and orders next week unless they've already been prepared. I'm not uh, sure if Chris didn't. You already prepared them? Yeah. Great. I'd request that the board review the findings in order and approve them uh, after they've done that based on Chris's representation. But I just wanted to let you know kind of a real world practical example of the importance of it. So, mm -hmm. thank so, you. Somebody is living at the property, but the mail did come back unclaimed. So I don't, I don't know if they, I mean, they were notified, but I guess it came back unclaimed. Okay. So I, I don't know if, I don't think we need to have any more hearings regarding it. But if they contact me again, I'll let them know what has transpired today. Okay, so you're, the expectation today is to approve the findings in order to remove the apartment. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And they've been notified of today. They have notice. Um, well, I, mean, I told the owner in person when I was doing the inspection, but the notice came back as unclaimed. Yep. So, yeah. For the record, uh, Chris showed me that there is a certified mail that went out and okay. it went unclaimed. So we have notice to the owner. Gotcha. Okay. I recommend the approval of the removal of the findings and orders as. And I concur. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, letter D, uh, business license, uh, late fee appeal, foreign local brewery, uh, tap room 489 Fayette Street. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, I uh, have my business at uh, 489 uh, Fayette Street where there was recently a Sour Note Brewing. Um, uh, my name is Michael Glowacki. The what was the last name, sir, Michael? Uh, Glowacki. Got you, okay. Um, and uh, because there was a previous business there, uh, we have mail forwarding on our address um, from uh, letters that will go to either 18th Street or uh, the Sour Note Brewing. And uh, a lot of times I don't get my mail uh, from USPS. Um, and even when I go to the post office, it's kind of a toss up between if it's actually been sent to their P.O. box and then, you know, trying to get someone to see if they can go through their mail and see if mine is in there. So uh, I haven't received like any notification of uh, the, um, the, the business license renewal um, up until I want to say the third week of July or shortly after that from uh, Tom Novak. So. Um, I, I would just like to appeal the, the late fees. Um, I've already paid the $305 of this year, but uh, I was contacted by uh, Dan Kawima, I believe. Um, Dan Kalina, yeah. Sorry. No okay. So you um, currently have a business license? No. Uh, no, because my previous, I, I did not renew last year because I just didn't, I was, just didn't know about it at all. But um, well, renew implies that you had one. Have you ever had a Yeah, day? yeah. Okay. Okay. Expired on that. Uh, gotcha. Okay. So we over 23, 24. Got it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've already paid the 305 for this upcoming year, 2024. Um, and regarding the late fees, like uh, for this year and the previous year, if I would ideally like to get them appealed and whatever money left over from the $305 check 
that I wrote can be used for the 2023 year that I did not renew as well. Yeah, I'm surprised it should be 305, right, Nick? Shouldn't it be 105? Well, it's 105 okay. for the regular fee, however, so the issue... It's a $200 the issue, wait the, fee. The last valid license that was issued here expired June of 2022. So we're here for 23, and then 2024's payment and license application was submitted after the applicable deadline. And so it was late for the, it would have been late for this year too. So we did not process that payment because the previous years wasn't taken care of. And then it was late this year. So um, this check was not cashed, the application was not processed because there was previous years owed. Um, so he would be here to appeal the late fees for 2023's license and 2024's because it was late this year. Um, there's an invoice here, but you know, I'll leave it to the board. He was, he did have a valid license uh, beginning in 2022. Um, and then subsequently for 23, we missed, and then 24, we were late, so we couldn't process that. I mean, to me, I mean, it's a new business. Uh, I think everyone's happy that Sour Note building's getting used. That's a good thing. Um, it sounds like they did take the effort to register it initially, which is great. It's like, and, you know, it's, a, it's on a kind of a weird cycle. It's right. Like June, right is it, it's June 30, right? Mm -hmm. And they get a month, like a 30 day grace period. Yeah. So I don't know, Nick, what your recommendation is, but yeah, they, we haven't had any issues out of the out of the property. Most likely, if Tom notified him, it's good if he was applying for like a temporary sign permit or something like that. We check uh, the licenses uh, status before issuing any of those. Uh, but yeah, it's the first time he's late. Uh, it's a new business, so I mean, as long as he understands that this isn't a um, uh, consideration that's provided, you know, every time. So make sure they're on time, and it's annually every time. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if the controller sends out uh, reminders We're or anything. We're going to start doing that. They okay. haven't done it yet. Right. So it's just um, something that, you know, it's kind of the business owner. I, I also did want to bring up, because, you know, um, for a small business like me, like $300 isn't like an insanely huge amount of money, but it is sizable for, you know, a business of our size. Um, and uh, I... Just think that it's a little unfair um, that there was zero like a uh, formal letters or uh, formal emails um, with you know with that. I well, believe it was just a, a postcard that was given out for those. Yeah, and there's no obligation for the city to give notice. It's a courtesy, and every business owner, you know, when they move into town, has an obligation to inform themselves of what the mm -hmm. rules are. But I think in your instance, we're I think we're considering, um, you know giving you a, a waiver based on the circumstances. Okay. Like, that's up to the board. No, I believe that's the same route we're on. The only thing I would say is, as Attorney Smith said, that's a, done as a courtesy, so okay. keep that in mind going forward, that you've paid it in the past, so you know you have to pay it every year, and you're going to have to not count on getting that reminder every year. Yeah. Um, and hopefully you get your mail straightened out, however that's going to happen. So Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. We're, <laughs> um, anyway, as long as you know going forward, we only extend the courtesy one time usually of waiving it. So just keep that in mind going forward, okay? Thank you very much. All right, I recommend the waiver, waive the, the waiving of the late fee for foreign local. And I concur. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for your time. <coughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, letter E, uh, C click fix, speed limit increase for 5300 to 5344 Calumet Avenue. Well, you'd find it interesting that I had a gentleman come into the engineering office yesterday asking us to post more speed limit signs on Calumet Avenue, uh, defining that the speed limit is in fact 25 miles per hour. That ordinance was set in, um, in uh, 1980, right? The, and the speed limit uh, for that area uh, between Michigan and Highland on Calumet is 25 miles per hour. I'm not inclined to make any changes. Uh, the the C click uh, comment related to the school being closed. Well, as we all know, school zone limits are 20 miles per hour through that area. So um, while the, the Calumet Avenue changes, it is a state highway, but it is the speed limits are, as you know, uh, under the local jurisdiction uh, to decide what those are. I don't see the, why we should make any changes at this time. But I, does he does he have the right hundred blocks? I mean, because that goes, it should be like through six thousand or sixty one hundred. So he was specifically, or the 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 person as I read it was specifically mm -hmm. by Lafayette School. 
Yeah, but even that's like that's 54, 5300 block. 5, but like you said, it goes all the way south to pass. all he all he was talking about just was that one little section. School, I got you right. He said the school's no longer in service. Right, it's being used as Nick D's headquarters or Nick D's Passions headquarters now. The school city has leased the building to the the Westlake project. So it's not a school, and the complaint was that because it's not a school, the school the speed limit should be changed. Okay. Well, school speed limits are 20 miles per hour, not 25. So, I I, I didn't I would ask that you deny the deny request. Deny the request. Yeah. Okay. 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 I recommend the denial of the request for the speed limit increase. And I concur. Thank you. A uh, letter F. C. Click fix dead end signs for 7760 New Hampshire Avenue. No objection. Refer to Public Works for uh, installation of yeah, right. uh, no right. outlet or no through street gotcha. signs as appropriate. I recommend the that we forward this to engineering for follow up. S excuse me. Uh, Public Works. Public, Public Works. Works. Sorry. Please. So this is approved. Yeah. So no objection. Pro yeah, approving his the request. Okay. I, and I concur. Uh, letter G, garage shell permit submitted for approval. I recommend the approval of the garage sale permit. And I concur. Number 10, old business, uh, letter A, status 847 117th Street. Good morning, everyone. Morning, gentlemen. ladies and gentlemen. I would, if it's all right, I wouldn't wanted to submit something I had written at 4 a.m. It's going to be. Could helpful. you? Could you? I know we we know you, but could you just, for the record, state your name? Michael Mike? Triano. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Brothers. Thank you. If I may hand this to uh, Mr. Smith and sure. Uh, Kelly. Sure. It's my notes, personal notes, and then I'll hand those to you as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, since the last time we were here, I do want to inform you that I failed and that I was not able to secure a roofing contractor for the chimney. It's a large chimney. Um, I had Ivan's roofing out there per uh, Mr. Luter's recommendation. I was unable to get them there. It was a miscommunication. Two weeks ago, roughly, I had Sanchez out there and I had G. Uh, Fatello. I can't pronounce that properly, I have their cards. Um, no bids, they ghosted me. Um, maybe it's a liability issue, they don't wanna to touch something that's existing. Um, I have Alamo coming out and today I'm off and tomorrow I'm off, I'm gonna take some time to make some more calls to secure that. I'm requesting a little more time on that particular aspect and then we can follow this new set of, I guess you would say, um, items mm -hmm. and I'd like to create an agenda from my perspective as to where we're at because people can't remember certain things I just want to state these things for the record so if everyone will see highlighted completed this is a report actually from Bill Luters uh, from a couple years ago I wanted to briefly touch upon all of these items that are highlighted as you will see we've maintained the yard we have replaced storm doors, doors and windows as needed. We have um, proper ventilation per code. The chimney, as you'll see, is uh, an issue that we have uh, come across after we had roof inspection. So Brian paid a significant amount of money for a roof which has some issues. So we are addressing that. The exterior side of the foundation is great. No bowing, cracking, replaced windows and doors, again, as needed to meet current egress, energy, light, and ventilation requirements. Uh, there is a rough um, framing, which had a past inspection, I do believe, as well. I just wanted to make that known. Hammond is aware of this. I just wanted to make you know, uh, aware of it and make it known um, so that there's no ambiguity or confusion. Highlighted complete on the second page, if you'll see. We replaced um, and reinforced ceiling joists. There were structural uh, issues that were corrected. Um, frame exterior walls as needed to accept R19 
2019 installation. We are going to hire immediately after the roof, as mentioned previously, that, in, that insulation company which is on record um, for under just 10,000, which is a steal. So we're gonna be doing that. Um, electric was brought up to code and I do believe Brian had a rough inspection in the past. That had to be updated and I had master systems out there this spring, which you'll see a little bit further down. Brian paid an $11,000 fee to them to finish that. Um, and last time I was here, Bill Luter uh, had mentioned a lot hadn't occurred. He's right in that overall nothing has occurred. But in actuality, we're at turtle pace. So things have occurred. I just wanted to clarify that Brian has spent some money and he has made a serious uh, attempt based on the income. Inflation has hit us personally, I got to say. Uh, not to make excuses, but that's legitimate. Uh, also, uh, to get off uh, that and go and stand point, I apologize. So I am a licensed plumber. I'm going to be repulling a permit under my company when we get to the plumbing, which will be just after the insulation. And uh, before finishes start, we're going to finish all the mechanicals. So as you'll see, the finished work here that is not highlighted, these are pretty much essentially finished items. Um, from wall coverings to uh, access panel for the, uh, the attic, our insulation, uh, R38 insulation, which is going to be addressed. It's going to be uh, kitchen and cabinetry and those various things, which my mother's going to have to choose. So we're going to have to try to watch the budget because that might get real high. So aside from that, um, spring 2023, to reiterate, electrical rough passed. He paid 11 grand this spring, I do believe. Uh, he also paid for a front entry door of about $3,000. So, you know, he had uh, definitely made an attempt there. Those were smaller items. But from a, I guess, a, a further standpoint, when you look at this, we have met a lot of these conditions over time. Hammond's been very gracious to uh, our family, and I want to state that we are, we are grateful for that. Patience has been fantastic. So we really can't complain. Um, and then, yeah, if you'll see late summer, roof repair, mechanicals will follow fall. Insulation HVAC system, for the record, is going to be quite considerable. We're at twenty to 26000 just for that. Um, fall additional plumbing, of course, I'm doing it, so I'm going to try to save. And then, again, it's those finishes and the aesthetics, which I'm sure my mother and my sister are going to uh, try to uh, really uh, make expensive and then spring I'd like to be landscaping that and then I'm thinking eighty two thousand dollars to finish the project that could be maybe a little minus maybe a little bit more but I think it's a rough decent estimate and that's pretty much it I just wanted to request a little bit a little bit more time in order to wrap up that chimney it's right on a valley it's a roof system that's metal I don't have that's out of my scope I can do the carpentry, but I think we're going to just hire it out and do the whole job. And that's it. I'm thinking that uh, given the timeline that's been presented, Mr. Luter was here, he confirmed that the, about the inspections being passed, which is great. Um, if we could set like a late fall, early winter status, maybe like a November. November 9th? I won't argue with that, but I was prepared to come here every 30 days. Well, it's not I mean, a problem. Guys schedule. Yeah. Um, sounds I, like it, I, what I would say is that if, if Bill feels like you got to come back before November 9th, he'll let us know. But otherwise, you guys good with that? Bill? Okay. November 9th. What, wonderful. Thank we're, you very much. We're good with it well, also. Sorry. So, no, we're good with it also. Okay. So. Okay. I recommend that we set this matter for status for November 9th, 2023. Wonderful. And I concur. Thank you very, very okay. much. Have a You're great welcome, day. guys. Thank you. Okay. Take care, guys. Okay, uh, number 11, rental registration hearings. Nick, none. Uh, meetings open to the public. Would anybody like to speak? Chris, you good? Sir, you have something back there? Come on up to the mic. <clears throat> Ooh, I thought you were going to speak as a pundit on that matter. It's yes. Nice. Good morning. Could you give us your name, please? Uh, Brandon Richardson. Good morning, Brandon. All right, how you doing? What can we do for you? I was concerning property uh, 5213 on Home and Ave. 5213 Home and Avenue? Yes. Okay. What are you concerned uh, about? It was supposed to be uh, due for a demolition. I was trying to stop the demolition um, by getting ready to do some work on the, uh, do a rehab on the building. And you, you own the building? Yes. Okay. Do you, are you aware of the building? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yeah, 5213 Home, and this is the basement.
basic office building. Oh, I know. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. How long have you owned it, sir? Uh, I purchased it, I believe it was November, October, November. Somewhere of, the, of this, of, of last, last year? Yes. And then what's your intentions if you were allowed to refurnish uh, it? If I was to be able rehab to it? rehab it, it would be more so if, if it's zoned for at least uh, residential, if not office spaces and retail, somewhere up in there. But more so, I would love to do residential in it. If okay. And if you were allowed to do that, what, what kind of time frame would you be looking at? Uh, the contractor that I'm dealing with, uh, he wanted to start when they were going to finish the street area, but from what I'm told, they need me to finish what I'm doing first in order to, for them to do what they're doing. So, Which is what, getting the approval? far that as, no, they can't do some type of work that they're doing on the um, sidewalk <laughs> over there where my building is, so, so I guess I have to do what I have to do first in order for them to do what they're working on. Okay. So, so, so just to set out where we are from a legal perspective, the um, building has changed hands several times. The building is under a valid demolition order that the board issued in November of 2021. Uh, Mr. Richardson has been in contact with the law department. Uh, so has his lawyer, Mr. Pearson, called me yesterday. Um, I talked with him. I talked uh, with him through it. I know that uh, Kelly will report that uh, he's given Mr. Uh, Richardson is uh, it's Richardson. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, the zone pro notes. Um, I think Dean's going to speak to a report, a structural report from Hasse. Uh It's the city's opinion that the property. Uh, well, two things. One, um, if there is an issue with notice to Mr. Richardson, it would have been the obligation of the of the prior owner to notify Mr. Richardson that it was under a demo order. Whether that happened or not, I don't know. But that's that would be between Mr. Richardson and a prior owner. There's an obligation of owners to let purchasers know that it's under a demolition order okay, when, they, when they sell it. Gotcha. Um, secondly, uh, based on the condition of the property, which I'm sure Mr. Kearney and Mr. Button are going to go into, mm -hmm. we have a significant concern that the building is unsalvageable. Uh, you may recall that the board also, about two and a half months ago, maybe two months ago, issued an emergency order yes. on the property, which yes. allowed Mr. Button uh, to enter the property to determine whether or not it was going to impact the vaulted sidewalk issue that's going on um, uh, because there was something that was affecting uh, the project. And I know Dean will, and Kelly will talk to that. Good morning, Kelly. Mr. Richardson. Oh, there's several issues that are going on with this property that um, including the report from Hassie Construction about um, it's unsafe to enter. It also has a huge amount of asbestos in the basement and ceiling tiles. And since there's basically a notice that it's not safe to enter, the state is going to require us to treat the building as it is fully contaminated, ceiling tiles or whatever on, on each floor. So the demolition is going to be very long and, and very expensive. Um, the basement of this extends, I'll have go further, extends past the sidewalk into the street. That would have to be filled, walled, constructed to be able to finish the street and the sidewalk. So it seems beyond salvageable and, and with a reasonable amount of money. Um, I don't, I'm not trying to avoid him from getting the opportunity to do it, but everything that we have indicates that the building is unsafe to enter, unsafe to work, and is basically should be condemned. Okay. It has been already. Yes. Has been already, yes. So a couple months ago, uh, I came before this board and asked, uh, asked for an emergency order that, uh, to, to have Mr. Kearney issue an emergency order to enter the building. During the course of our construction, we found that there was major subsidence in Holman Avenue that was, was not uncovered until we removed the surface uh, asphalt and concrete. There was a very large void that was occurring underneath in front of BASIC. And so that was my... Uh, my impetus to request from Mr. Kearney entry into the building to determine what was what was going on because something the sewer lateral was collapsing and we needed to investigate that and so when we when we went inside uh, we found that it was um, the floor was extremely soft you could on the on the first floor it was uh, spongy as you walk through alarmingly so. Uh, the basement had about four inches of water at the time, um, and uh, and the ceiling joists in on the first floor into the basement were collapsing, and so the the building uh, plus 
there is uh, rainfall coming in and have has been for a very long time from the from the roof. So the the, the ceiling the the roof is not secure or tight. Um, the the building is in horrible condition. Uh, um, it. it, it so I, I brought this to the attention of the building department to figure out where we could move forward on that. And so that's why we're here and uh, we needed to move forward with the demolition in order to fi fix the problem in Holman Avenue and then continue with our construction. Thank you. Yeah, and and we're, this is just public comment, right? So I, yeah. I don't know where we're at right now, but um, you know, the, there's a valid order. So I, I think you can take Mr. Richardson's comments if you want, give him any direction you'd like, but I mean, the legal status of this is there's a valid demolition order. The city has the obligation, or at least it has the um, belief that it should move forward with that or valid demolition order. I know Mr. Kearney has been working with the uh, demolition contractor, JM, to uh, get them the permits that they need. Um, and the intention is to move forward. Um, you know, Mr. Richardson, I, I feel bad for what situation he's in, um, but you know, I would encourage him to talk to Mr. Pearson, his attorney, as to what, you know, steps that he believes he can take. I mean, I can't give him any legal advice. We think we're on solid ground. We have a valid order, and there's nothing really, the appeal time's long gone. Uh, he's a subsequent owner from the original owner that we got the, uh, uh, that we got the order on, but, you know, we feel like we're gonna, on solid ground legally and gonna move forward. Mr. Richardson, I meant did you get the email I sent you about the HACCP construction letter? No. I'll talk about for him, but did you get we the have to go by there. Did I email you? No. Um, I got some construction. Um, I believe I came up here and got um, no, but no. I got some mail from no. the attorney yeah. email and okay. the email. Well, after this, I'm going to come down to my office and I'll give you yes. that letter, make sure yes. you get it. Uh, but it was right. more so like a printout of uh, uh, print. A printout of uh, things that's been going on with the building. That's yeah, that's that's right. his own phone notes. That's yeah. the one you get. I actually got the letter from Hassel Construction that I gave him. Uh, right. Copy of it. See that. Maybe be a little more enlightened with the, why we're in this situation. The other thing I was going to mention is that I talked I talked to Mr. Richardson about this. I said, you know, listen, the, if and he was concerned, and he rightfully should be about a lien being placed on this property after, for the demolition. And I said, you know, you're still going to own the land, and. The city is always open to seeing development, and we have in the past made significant reductions to liens if a good development plan comes forward. And given the condition of the property, you know, we've seen this before where people allow their property to be demolished and then start fresh. And I don't know, I mean, it's up to him to figure out whether or not that's a good situation for this property, but, you know, he will still be the deed title owner of the property after all this. So I guess my question for you, Kevin, because it's public expression, we don't need to take an action here? No, the board's already taken action. There's right. No action to take. I mean, but so. Mr. Richardson, I, I hope you, you heard everything they said. And if we were to take action, we would, of course, tend to follow their direction because they're the experts in the field. We're not. Um, so hopefully everything Attorney Smith just said you took into consideration, a contact your attorney and kind of find out what your next you know, plan is. Uh, but as of right now, we're going to follow through with the, uh, the demolition. So, um, you know, you'll have to do what you have to do going forward. So. So, but my question is, okay, on a demolition, am I like what well, he brought up about the lien? Am I to be left with that if it, if it were to be demolition? Again, so. I mean, I heard. It, yeah, yeah, it's on your property. I, I can tell you that our practice in the past has not been to enforce those. We generally wait to see if the property is sold or the property wants to get developed. It'll be on the property, but you know, I, it's going to show up on the title. Um, and if it, yeah, I would say to Mr. Richardson that if it does somehow negatively impact him or if he wants to talk about it, we'll try to figure that out with him. And we have an obligation to put a lien on the property. Afterwards. Gotcha. Yeah. But so. But our past practice has been, I think, over the last 12 to 15 years, we may have foreclosed on one of them. So and gotcha. generally we work them out. Yeah. And that was because of an environmental issue. So if he came up with some kind of plan, you would, the city would probably be willing oh, to negotiate that. Okay. To so. And my other question was, what, uh, were they trying to tear, uh, demo the building because they have to work on the sidewalk or? No. Was that the reason? No, because it's unsafe. But um, 
prior to them saying that it was unsafe, I, when I talked to the guys, uh, what was the company? Um, oh, Hassey? Yeah, I talked to those guys. They were saying they, they just need to get into the building to work on the sidewalk. Right? They, so they basically were saying that they need to work on the side. I mean, in order for them to do what they got to do, they got to get through my building. So yeah, I think Hassey has a different, yeah. you know, they're, they're, the, they're, the con they're the contractor for the street, right? right? So I think they have probably a different mindset on what they're trying to get done on there. It is all happening at the same time, but I can tell you, like, we did the demo order on this property, and there's been a file on this property well before is it that two, street project. Is it two separate people, like Hassey and someone Hassie else? Hassey is a private company, right? They, that's doing the sidewalk. That's doing the construction project on Home and Avenue. Yeah, so they're the contractor. But they can't work on the sidewalk unless they get into the... I don't know. I mean, know unless the building is torn down, basically. I don't think Hassey has no agreement with us because right. if the building demolishes, then we, we don't need to remove that sidewalk. That will be part of the demolition, right? That portion of the basement of the sidewalk. Yeah, we, I mean, so, no. so right agreeing. now we have no we have no agreement with Hassey to remove. The, the demolition orders were set long right. before the home and avenue project started. It's a matter of consequences that the situation with the vaulted sidewalks, as I explained to you, or extend. Foundation and basement extend past the front of the building into the street under the sidewalk. Their one of the initial intent was to get in that building and mm -hmm. see what they could need to do to shore that up so they would support the sidewalk. And the under the emergency order, right? But the but the original order was. I mean, I remember this going back. It, but there was a concern. There was the neighboring buildings were getting water. Right. They they believed it was coming from basic because at that time it was like a foot or two feet of water I think in the basement. So it's been an ongoing issue ever since it's been vacant. It went up on tax sale. Someone bought it on tax sale. I don't know if that's who sold it to you, but you know it's been it, it's just been a problem building for some time since it became vacant. I forget when Basic moved out of there, but I want to say it was probably eight, seven, eight years ago, probably. I, I just feel like his what he think what he thinks is happening is Hassey has to get in his building to finish work. That's why it has to be demolished, and that's not that's, the case. That's my question. No, I got you. I, I know that's what you think, but I. Yeah, I, mean, I I'm just going off what they told me. I got yeah, you. And, and, and we have yeah. not given them any direction. Like you need to get the building to fix because we're going to knock it down, and then then you're going to. That's not the case. I mean, there has been an impetus to get this building down for a while, and because the and it's been under a demolition order for a while, almost two years, right? Right. But because, or I should say, in. It's all come to a head kind of at the same time. Maybe that's the best way to put it. And we always are very careful about what, making sure our demo orders don't expire. It's, you know, we want to get this thing down before right. the demo order expires. So that's another thing. It just it, It's happening all at the same time, but the purpose of the demo order was not because of the Home and Avenue Street project. I gotcha. Okay. Hopefully that answered your question, Mr. Richardson. I mean, it didn't. I, I, I got gotcha. you. I understand what he's saying, but it didn't. Okay. And, and I did have a whole plan of going about fixing the building because I, I mean, I do have the resources for it. And is that Kelly? Is that something you can talk? Is that something you can speak with him after the meeting about? Okay. So move it on to my office. I'll show you right. a letter that'll help explain some of the, of the situation from Hanson. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Right. He'll you. take you downstairs and give you a better explanation. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, anybody else in the public like to speak? Good, Chris. Okay. I recommend that we adjourn. And I concur. <laughs>